YouTube, YouTube, here they are, YouTube, oh my goodness, okay. As you know, we've got the New Balance Beacons, the Baby Blues, Baby Blues are the nickname for these shoes. We've got the Solomon Speed Cross 5s, the Big Bad Wolves, the nickname for these shoes. And now, we've got the Hoka Carbon Rockets. Will these shoes, will the nickname for these shoes be the Rockets? I don't know. Will they live up to the hype of the Carbon Rocket naming? I'm not sure. And today's vlog is going to be my first impression of the Hoka Carbon Rocket on my feet. And yes, I'm going to go out for 13 miles. We're going to do 10 miles at about 7 minutes a mile, so about 4 minutes per kilometer approximately. And then we're going to drop it down the last 3 miles. Probably drop it down to like 620s, maybe 615s. We'll see how the legs are feeling in the Hoka car, oh my goodness, are you excited folks? And yes, the Hoka Carbon Rockets are the first carbon fiber plate, running shoe, racing shoe to hit the market since the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit last year in 2018. So let's put them on the feet. I'm gonna film my reaction to how they feel immediately going onto my feet. And then we're gonna go get it done, ladies and gentlemen. We are gonna go get it done 13 miles, oh man. And then of course, we'll break it down in the shooting. All right, the rockets are on my feet. They're on my feet. What's next? I'm gonna hold the GoPro in my face, right in my face, and basically the first, you know, 100 meters of, of running, I'm gonna film my gut reaction, just so you see, like, okay, yay or nay, like, just for that first initial impression. All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are halfway, six miles. Gonna go 13, so almost halfway. And I'm going a little faster than I should be. It's a tailwind today. I've got a tailwind. It's either the tailwind or it's the shoes or maybe it's a combination of both. I was hoping to go about seven minute pace. I'm closer to about 6.45 pace, halfway. And now, I'm gonna go back to my house. Three miles, I'm gonna just try and chill out. And then the last three miles, I'm gonna drop it down just a little bit because the Hoka Carbon Rockets are definitely, definitely a racing shoe and a fast shoe. So, all right, let's go. Here we go, there's 10 miles, 10 miles in 107. And I don't always carry my phone with me, but I'm really glad I did today because I gotta take some notes about these shoes so I don't forget like how they're actually feeling right now at mile 10 and also how they felt at mile three. Interesting things happening right now. So I'm just gonna send myself a text. Uh, one second here, hold on, hold on. All right, before going out to the studio to talk about the Hoka Carbon Rockets, we're gonna watch a little Super Bowl, and yes, do some strengthening as we await the outcome of the Patriots versus Rams. Who you guys got, who you guys got? I'm actually going with, I hate to say it, 
I'm going with the Patriots, although I want the Rams to win. But I think I think Tom Brady's going to pull it out. It's like, how do you go against that? So, all right, come on. Welcome to the studio. All right, if it looks a little darker in here tonight, it's because a big light bulb just burned out right there. So we've got to roll the punches. Got to roll with the punches. All right, tip of the day. Keep the cardboard that comes with your shoes because what I do, especially for the expensive shoes, which yes, the Hoka Carbon Rocket is a little more on the expensive side. I put the cardboard back in after every single run and basically that helps keep the form of the upper so that it doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't break down as quickly. So that's my tip of the day. Put that cardboard back in there. All right, let's dive in. And yes, this is not my full review of the Hoka Carbon Rocket, nor is it a comparison video to the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Uh, that is gonna be coming probably, I'd say we'll make, I'll be able to compare these two shoes I think in the next two to four weeks. Does that sound good? I actually need to put this guy back on my foot. I haven't worn it in maybe six six weeks, maybe eight weeks. So I need to re-familiarize myself with the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. And yes, put some more miles into the Hoka Carbon Rocket for all of you before we get you that comparison. Okay, let's dive in first to some specs behind the Hoka. Okay, we're going to do one comparison, actually. I'm going to take the cardboard back out of the Hoka Carbon Rocket and the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit in order to weigh them. Come on, let's weigh them. And frankly, I don't I don't know how much these two shoes weigh. Like I'm learning with you right now. I I glanced at the weight before I bought it, but I don't remember exactly how much. And I haven't weighed this shoe in so long. It's been like I said, six to eight weeks. So let's find out together. Come on. Okay, there you go. The only comparison I'm doing between these two shoes tonight, seven and the same size shoe, just so you know, 7.1 ounces, six ounces. So the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit is an ounce lighter. It's an ounce lighter, all right? And so 201 grams for the Hoka Carbon Rocket and 172 grams for the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. I did 13 miles in this shoe today. Uh, 21 kilometers. I averaged 635 a mile and definitely dropped the pace the last three miles, as you saw, uh, which was good. You know, I didn't quite hold the pace I wanted. I think that, like I said, that he that headwind was battling today and that is 405 per kilometer. So solid first run in the Hoka Carbon Rocket. And you're probably wondering about the drop. So 26 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 25 millimeter stack height in the forefoot, which means a one millimeter drop in the Hoka Carbon Rocket. So not quite zero drop, but pretty darn close. As you know, Ultra, uh, Topo, uh, who else is very well known for a zero drop shoe. This is approaching a zero drop shoe, which is very interesting. And if you're wondering, uh, what is it? Through the forefoot. So that 25 millimeter stack height through the forefoot of the Hoka Carbon Rocket is the exact same stack height as the Clifton. So just to give you, if you're a Clifton fan, uh, th at least through the forefoot, it's the exact, sta exact same stack height. It's through the upper, you saw me putting them on on my back patio earlier today. Comfortable, very comfortable, ladies and gentlemen. The upper, it's an open engineered mesh, open engineered mesh, very breathable, felt great today. And the it was like about 60, no, maybe mid 50s, upper 50s today. So I didn't feel hot at all in the shoe, just felt nice and breathable and no pressure points. I'm very uh, aware of pressure points when I put a new shoe on. Like that's one of the first things I'm looking for is like, okay, are there any new pressure points happening? I'm trying to remember a shoe recently that I've put on 
Uh, you know what? The Skechers Razor 3. I distinctly remember a few just minor, minor pressure points happening. None of that in the Hoka Carbon Rocket today through the upper. So, so far, very comfortable through the upper. Uh, we're talking like a... Uh, uh, saw a, um, a booty feel through the upper, which is good. Like, I, I just felt really, really nice. One last point on the upper. Probably a lot of you can relate to this. Break down uh, through the upper right here on the outside of the shoe and on the inside. Like, I can distinctly remember my first Clifton's, like, just tears basically through the upper so it's gonna be interesting hoka one one are you figuring out your upper a little as far as durability goes because that you know as soon as it's as soon as soon as you start getting tears through the upper and actually my first speed goats as well just like tears right around where your toes meet the rest of your foot and that's no good and i it's like 250 miles in and you're already getting tears through the upper you know it's not like the shoe is totally shot at that point but it's not a good it's not a good sign uh so hopefully the carbon rocket has a better durability through the upper and through the midsole no major issues today basically it has that hoka rocker feel but what's really interesting is that you can see the carbon fiber plate I'm gonna film real close for you, and it's a little bit of an issue, Hoka. I'm already realizing there's rocks getting stuck in these, it's basically little windows through the outsole of the shoe, and so you can actually see the, it's kind of neat, I must say. It's it's kind of neat marketing, I would say. However, I'm I like I nailed a rock right into that window, and I'm actually gonna pull it out for you right now so you can see the carbon fiber plate, and listen, I like I like that I can see the carbon fiber plate because it's like, okay, there's actually a plate in there. But obviously, I, I actually distinctly remember, I think it was around mile six or seven where I got that rock stuck and I didn't want to stop and I could kind of feel it the rest of my run. But, and so I'm just hoping, Hoka, that rocks are not getting stuck in these windows into the carbon fiber plate every single run. That'll get a little annoying, and so we will see, we'll see. But I must say, as a consumer of a shoe, that's kind of brilliant, and I enjoy being able to see that carbon fiber plate. There you go, those are my first impressions of the upper, the midsole, and the outsole just after my first run. And now, how did it perform? Here you go, transparent, honest, gut reaction. I, after three miles today, I had to stop and make sure that I did not tie my left shoe too tight. Because guess what? My left foot was kind of going numb and it was hurting. And so here's my thought on this, folks. I think this shoe is running narrow. So if you're concerned about fit, this shoe appears so far to be running narrow, through, especially through the forefoot. Like my foot was kind of throbbing today and I stopped and I was like, wait a minute, I did not tie this shoe too tight. Like I didn't even unlace it, like it, it was fine. And so I'm a little concerned and I went true to size, like as far as my sizing, I went with my size, seven and a half, and it felt really narrow through the forefoot. Uh, so I'm a little concerned. I'm wondering if you need to go a half size up. I'm thinking I should have maybe done that, okay? So just putting that out there, it felt narrow and my left foot was literally going numb, but by mile six, it kind of went away, okay? So maybe I'm just needing to get used to it. So I'm just, anyway, I just want to be totally transparent with you. Also in the first three miles, I was yearning for a higher drop. I'm just saying it, I was yearning for a higher drop. It's a one millimeter drop, as I already mentioned. And I was like, gosh, it would just be kind of nice to have just a little more oomph under my heels so I could kind of get up on my midfoot and forefoot a little better. So again, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, it was in the back of my mind the first three miles. And again, I did, I forgot about it as the run went on. Now today I'm wrapping up a pretty good training week. And so my leg, you know, I think I hit almost 10,000 feet of vertical. And sure enough, like I feel it, my legs feel it. And so as far as like turnover and going fast, I'm, I'm factoring that into answering the question, do these shoes feel fast? And I tell you what, they do. They do feel fast. However, my legs weren't really that excited to go fast, even though I tried there at the end for the last three miles. Uh, but I must say, they felt like a smooth operator. Like, they felt smooth, just so you know. Um, nice transition from heel to toe. Like, just nice transition. Okay, I think those are my first impressions. Thank you. 
Keyword, carbon. Keyword is carbon and that question of the day. YouTube, we're gonna go in two different directions here, two different directions. If you wanna go this way, run with it. Question of the day. Favorite Super Bowl commercial. I'm actually missing some right now, so I gotta zip back in and watch the rest of the game. I have no clue what's happening. Favorite Super Bowl commercial, that's your first option. Or your second option, will you consider purchasing the Hoka Carbon Rocket at $160 in 2019? So, $250, okay, I said I wasn't gonna compare. $250. $160, huh? Huh? All right. So anyway, just putting that out there. You've got two options for the question of the day today. All Woo! right. And that is it for today. If you, oh yeah, putting the cardboard back in, preserving that upper. And yes, if you learned something today, maybe you could share this video around Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want. I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. Woo! Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Mm. Carbon rocket. We shall see. We shall see.